Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. This is channel number three of four. The other two are very findable, and I would advise to listen to those to better understand this one. The ones that came first set the stage for a series of four called The Love Machine. Everything is metaphoric. So, man, so, so, so many of the messages that we give to you, personal and public, are filled with energies which we have defined as the third language. Messages on messages. Nothing is literal. It's all expansive, dear ones, because the, the language of spirit is expansive. It's filled with that which is multidimensional and that which has layers of understanding and beautiful. The love machine, love is that from the creator. The machine is a word that means there is something that is in progress, in work on this planet that has an outcome and a reason. Parts that move in a succinct way that are logical and respond to the operator which is you, not spirit. We have said for many, many years that the human brain is not the final, the final organ of logic. It's not where it's all done, that really there is a triad, that the heart and the pineal are involved in all of these things. They have to be. They're the ones that talk to the Akash. They're the ones that recognize the third language. The brain, that's the computer. That's the one that is survival. The ones with the highest intellect are using their pineal, not their brain. The ones who are using the highest intellect are using their intuition, not their brain. The intuition that would say this is correct, this is not correct. Or perhaps there's more, and here's what it might look like. We left off on the last channel telling you about the history of the planet, the 200,000 year ago event, where those from the stars came, which became that which is your creation story, your Adam and Eve story. That those who came, you could not tell the difference between those and what you now call angels, you still can't. Because they were ascended beings in charge of the physics around them. They did not need craft to get here. That's three-dimensional thinking. We told you that eventually consciousness allies with physics, and that is mastery. Practiced even today in some of the higher gurus who no longer need to eat. They're here. They're on the planet. They're actually practicing the very things we have told you. They're the forerunners of what you will see someday is the connection of consciousness and ascension. We told you that Lemuria was the center because it was isolated. It became the center of teaching. But there were many places where the star mothers taught. Lemuria is talked about specially because it was isolated to the degree it was never interfered with. You could never come back to it. And so it was special and purer than the rest. And because of that, it's the only one that had to be then stopped and terminated at a certain point in the teaching area, and that's when it sunk. We've given you this information so many times before that it did not sink because of plate tectonics activity, but because of volcanic activity. The very kinds of things that happened in the country where I sit in Yellowstone happened there. The bubble of magna which pushed up the mountains subsided. And those left, and that was approximately 15,000 years ago, but it had been teaching for a lot longer than that. The teaching actually began 
50,000 years ago. And we talked about why that was so precious too and why it was needed, just like your children need to be taught. You received souls then, dear ones. That's the Adam and Eve story. That's creation. You received souls. And the whole idea of a tree of knowledge, it, it had to do with teaching. What was sacred, what was not, how spirit works, what's next, in order to get you to the place where you could start choosing your lives for yourself. You had no Akashic record, none at all. You had really no life experience, none at all. It was the beginning of the beginning. There had to be teaching. Missionaries in certain belief systems understand this because when they go into tribes, they had to start at the beginning. They had to explain that which is the creative source and all these things that the tribes don't already know. It's just an example of when you have a civilization that literally knows nothing about what you're trying to teach, you have to start at the beginning. The Lemurian teaching wheel was the beginning. There were many wheels and offshoots from that, and we told you that, and we have said that before. But this story starts when Lemuria stops. And what I want to tell you is that the history of this planet for the last 30,000 years has been remarkable and unknown. Almost completely unknown. And so when I talk about it now, and the grandness of it, and the mystery of it, and the numbers of it, it's all new. My partner has taught it. He has indicated things about it. I've channeled about it. But if you have just come upon this channel, this may be brand new to you and very eye-rolling because it is not represented in any of your history, any of your mainstream science, which has it completely and totally wrong. This doesn't make them uneducated, dear ones, or, or anything like that. It just means that they're grasping at the straws that they see now. Here is going to be the test of your science. When you start discovering things that do not match the model of what you've been taught, what will you do? Will you quickly bury them in the sand? Or will you be open for a new kind of history? Here's what I want to tell you. This intervention that we have been speaking about has cycles. And the cycles go like this. That each civilization on this planet is given approximately 5,000 years to see if they develop. But there's more. Because there's a cycle of consciousness that you don't know about yet. And as a sociologist, they're only beginning to hint at. And here it is. How long does it take a civilization before it destroys itself through either inactivity or war or pandemic how long does it take and that is cyclical and has an answer and sociologists are starting to hint at it is there a cycle of humans that they can only last so long before they go into dysfunction Unless they grow up, unless a consciousness influence happens, how long do they have? It's a good question. I'll give you the answer. 5,125 years. Now, some of you may recognize that number. I'll tell you why in a moment. Here's something that you need to know. There have been five civilizations before you on this planet five completely different civilizations before you you have participated in number five if you ask the experts they will say that civilization as you know it is only six thousand years old they will point to the egyptians as being one of the oldest the pyramids being five thousand years old if you go back a little further with the languages of Sanskrit and cuneiform, you go into the Indus Valley, it's pushing it, but maybe 6,000. And before that, there was nothing. 
That's foolishness. <laughs> That's just yours, dear ones. You don't know about the one before that and the one before that and the one before that. Oh, but you will. <laughs> because as your technology improves and gets better, you'll be able to see. They'll be exposed. They're being exposed even now. You find places where you dig down and there are structures that shouldn't be there, built by people who shouldn't have been there, with languages you don't recognize, with geometry that's too good for the time, with alignments to the planets before they are supposed to know even about planets, and you'll have no explanation. Let me give you a little scenario that's kind of fun. The Egyptians, with their 5,000-year-old civilization, one of the temples they built was Abydos. Beautiful. It has things there that no other temple has. They're very proud of that, the age of it, all the history of it, and you go and you visit. But the Egyptians had no idea when they built it, they built it on another city, <laughs> which is now being exposed. Go behind Abydos, if you'd like to, and see another city which has been carbon dated at 10,000 years old. They're not talking about that because it violates everything they've learned and teach in the Cairo University. Six civilizations. Six? What about six? six? You said five. Well, that's because they all had a time limit and they all failed. Something happened that they had to start again of their own making or with Gaia's help. And you were scheduled to that too. It was your own schedule. It was your own schedule. You have free choice. Did you read it in your scripture? You weren't going to last after the year 2000. You're going to turn on the lights and everybody was going to go home. That was what was going to happen. It's in your scripture. Read it. That didn't happen. You survived it. None of the others did. And in 2012, interesting. That's when you began, number six. One of the highest civilizations in consciousness that will exist on this planet. What is the duration of the Mayan calendar? 5,125 years. It represented the last civilization. It's part of a divisible by five of 26,000 year wobble of the planet. Five civilizations. Each had their own calendar. Start doing the numbers, you'll start seeing there may be some sense in all of this, especially with what they're finding. I want to close the channel with a plea. I'm not going to explain what the six were. Number six is you now, what the five past ones were or how they came and went. I started and will continue in an island in a beautiful lake in Germany. You can find that channel. It's the only time I've talked about it. But right now, it's just the facts. Here is my plea. Dear one, so many of you, including the historians, have a bias. And the bias goes like this. That the further off, the, the further in history you find humans, the less intelligent they are. Until you finally get to the caveman who you think is grunting to their partner and has no language. You know. Oh, you would be shocked to know that some of these civilizations before yours did better than you're doing, had better mathematics than you do, have figured out things that you haven't. The plea is this, to look at history differently and know that as far back as you can find civilization, you will find people just like you, thinking just like you, as smart as you are. They didn't have the inventions you have, and that's the only difference. They did things that you're doing today without them. Sometimes they were even smarter. They had elegant museums. They had libraries. They had their own ways. They had orality. They knew so much about so much, and it was lost every single time they started again. You're going to find some of those things, and you're not going to understand it. 
Because of the bias that says, well, they couldn't have been that smart. Oh, yes, they were. They were much smarter than you were in many areas. They were not impressed with having ten fingers and toes like you were. Their math was based four instead of five. They only, you only have two factors in your math. They had more than four. <laughs> they were able to, to let the math speak to them and give them an elegance you still haven't seen. They knew how not to overpopulate their area. You haven't figured that out yet. There are so many things that they could teach you. If you could talk to them, oh, but you were them, dear ones. It's in your Akash. <laughs> that will start being remembered as well. Remembering the things that worked, the ideas to come, and that's the next channel. What's next in number six, where you are now? You sit in a reboot where you can get to know each other better, where things are starting to examine themselves and things are starting to crawl out of the corners of blackness and show themselves so you'll see what you don't want anymore. Solutions are afoot to problems that have been with you for hundreds of years. We'll talk about that next. The history of humanity is far grander than you know, older than you think, beautiful. And someday you'll be studying it in this way. You can't help it. It won't be esoteric. You can hold it in your hand when you start digging. Some of it has survived very well and been preserved. You just haven't seen it yet, but you will. All of the things I tell you now come to a grand conclusion. And the next channel talks about it and who you really are. The only civilization so far on this planet not to have destroyed themselves after 5,125 years and are standing at the cusp of what's next that other planets have seen and gone to. And that's why I'm here to celebrate and help and to begin to work with the nodes and the nulls that are starting to push grandness onto this planet. Higher consciousness will be the result. I'll be back. And so it is.